what is the and asset? Yeah. So for, for your audience, if I told them what, what is the and asset, they would all turn off the podcast. <laughs> the and asset is life insurance. Um, but I, you have to understand when I, when I was working at the bank, I learned a ton from Dave Ramsey and like, I very much was bought into like, what we want to do is grow our wealth. And if you asked me at the time, I would want to run a hedge fund because I just was super fascinated by all that. And, and so then I started, when, when I started like asking questions, when I took over the bank's investment department, like what are the wealthy doing that majority of people aren't? And the wealthy understand two concepts. They understand lifetime value of a dollar compounding. So it's like, it's just like they they understand the value that, that your money has to grow, but they also understand something that we don't value as a culture and a society is is this something called control like they they understand the value of controlling capital and actually banks and wall street they tell us to do one thing but they're doing the exact opposite they're giving us some type of rate of return they're telling us to compound for the long term but what they're doing is they're taking capital reinvesting in it and making more money in fact warren buffett known as like the the stock market <laughs> guru really it's a joke he's not a stock market guru he buys and sells companies he makes his money through controlling and he's just over historically he's been correct and so that's confidence compounded, but he hasn't, he's, he's like, if Warren Buffett buys your company and you're a, a VP, that's not really pulling your weight, you're, you're unemployed. Like he's, he's ruthless and he, but he turns companies around. So I just started learning all this stuff. And then I started looking at like where all these people were putting a lot of their money and a lot of, a lot of banks and corporations, and a lot of people that I was learning from were putting a lot of money into life insurance. And you have to understand Billy, like, I'm like, why are you doing that? Like, I understand life insurance has some tax benefits, but like, I literally thought you'd be better off putting your money, like digging a hole and putting <laughs> it in the ground versus like putting it into a horrible insurance product. And that's where I learned that majority of life insurance is not meant to overfund or pay into um, and have it be a good idea. Um, but I had some misconceptions. I thought it was it was compared to an investment. And like my the epiphany moment happened when I realized that all these banks and corporations and wealthy people that I was learning from, they weren't looking at life insurance as the it or the or or the investment. They were looking at it as a place to store capital and they would store capital in it. It would grow for the rest of their life tax free. And they would have the ability it's see the word and and they would have the ability to collateralize that money allowing their money to continue to grow tax-free and they would be able to go and reinvest it into other things like real estate their business or other things and so essentially you have a couple things going number one you have a, a tax-free growth vehicle that that alone you could argue was would be valuable especially when you look at what's what's to come you have a something that's rock solid very safe but then the ability to borrow against or collateralize and take a dollar and give it two jobs rather than one, you now create velocity where now your dollars are doing more than one thing. And when I had that epiphany that it's like the world is telling you you have to choose between this or that, save for like be an entrepreneur or save for the long haul, compound your money or control it. And the and asset was not this thing that was going to take either side, but was going to be an and. I was like, man, that this needs to get out in the world. And my mindset from life insurance went from it's a horrible investment to uh, this is this like I'm going to put a lot of money over six figures a year into this as a savings vehicle that allows me to show up powerfully in other business transactions and opportunities. Right. Awesome. Awesome. So one of the biggest things, and when I first learned about this strategy of using the and asset, I was like, wait, life insurance? I thought that was when you're 30 years old, you have two kids and a wife or husband or wife, and you want to just pretty much protect them in case you die. Yeah, that's kind of like the yeah the general definition for most people, they probably say something along that storyline. What, what do you say to those people who, you know, I just haven't heard of the end asset and think that life insurance is only used for the scenario I just mentioned, you know, the kids protecting the, the family? That's a great question, by the way, I, I think I would take a step back and say, what does someone want to accomplish? And let's let's take efficiency, for example. So I'm in Denver, you're in Wisconsin. And uh, like the first thing that people really need to get clear is what do they want? So let's say I want to get to you. So I know where I want to go. I could walk to you and I would get to you eventually. I have enough money. I'm in shape. Uh, within a month, you know, I wouldn't starve. I would walk and I would probably get to Wisconsin within a month. Okay. So I did accomplish that goal or I could get a bus or I could figure out a train. I don't know if there's a train system, <laughs> but the, the, the I could get a car and I could get to you within a day or I could hop onto an airplane and get to you within, you know, two or three hours. That the, the purpose of me sharing that is we have to, first of all, ask the question, what do you want? Want. And then we have to understand efficiency is getting that the most effective way. If the if the airplane costs me ten thousand dollars, I'm it might be actually more efficient for me to take the car because yeah, it takes me a little bit longer, but you know time 
my time's not necessarily worth ten thousand dollars an hour or something like that so you, there's there's always a measurement but it's way more efficient than walking i think we can all agree with that right so the and asset is just a way to speed up efficiencies because now it's allowing you to protect your family grow for 30 40 50 60 years of uninterrupted compounding give you the ability to reinvest and now you're giving a dollar three sometimes four or five jobs rather than one. So it's for the person that's, that values control. For someone that doesn't value control and is just going to put their money somewhere, you can make the argument that putting your money into a Roth or a 401k, over 30, 40 years, the 401k would be higher than the than the life insurance. Like I, even with the tax benefits, I would be in favor of that. But when you add control and the it factor, the you factor, life insurance will enhance that and allows you to um, have more of your money working for you. And so I don't know if that answered your question, but I think it, I think we have to understand the efficiency and and most people don't have a clarity on where they want to go and if they just had clarity on where they want to go they would be able to make decisions not in a vacuum right no to totally understand that and it's, it's about it's about the control if you can break down what you know on a very high level what it actually looks like if someone says okay you know i, I like control i like to compound my money and you know it, it, it sounds like it makes sense what does it actually look like on a, on a high level yeah for someone looking to um use this strategy so there, there's always a break-even point um so so for instance if someone values control and puts their money in a savings account they have total control over that money and they they can use it to buy and sell real estate and all that stuff but what is what are over 30 years what are they going to actually earn on their money sitting in savings almost zero okay right. especially and the fed just announced that interest rates aren't, aren't necessarily going up anytime soon so you have you have that and then in life insurance the the quote-unquote disadvantage is you put in that same amount of money into life insurance and you don't have all the money that you put in immediately you have most of it but not all of it but that money is is growing over a longer period of time with interest tax-free growth and then all these other benefits that are going to benefit you in retirement and so if you just had the savings account and the life insurance over 30 years you know the life insurance is going to be twice as much if not more than what you have in your savings account so it's like the compound effect is a real thing but it's not like going to be earth-shattering so right. so then you have the ability of in the savings account you take money out when you want it and you can put it back in in a life insurance you don't take your money out because that would kill compounding you borrow against it so now your money now your money is never interrupting compounding and you still have the ability to um, utilize that capital but you have to be able to deploy it in areas that can get you a positive rate of return and so there's a couple things but if someone came to me and said caleb i want to look into this the, the first thing that they need to do is they actually need to um, get underwritten so it's kind of like um, when you go to a bank and get a mortgage you and, and you want to shop for a home you first of all need to get approved for like how much you can afford. And so that's the that's the process of like people actually need to go through um, the underwriting process, which sometimes requires a medical exam, sometimes it doesn't. Um, but it, it pretty much says like, hey, I'm healthy. This is how much you'll be willing to insure in me because you can't be worth more dead than alive. Um, so you get that established and then you work with a specialist like our team that, that just pretty much says, okay, what we're gonna do is we're gonna do the exact opposite of what everyone does with life insurance. We're gonna put as much money in and get the least amount of insurance. Why? Because we want the least amount of drag to your cash because we're not doing it solely for the death benefit. We're doing it as a found foundational asset. And so what we need to do is we need to overfund. We need to create a specially designed policy to maximize the cash benefits and minimize the death benefit and do it up into the what's called the mech line to make everything the money grows can be utilized after and can get passed on in the next generation income tax free. And that's that's kind of like the quote unquote nuts and bolts of like getting clarity, understanding the pros and cons of potentially like funding and not having access to all your money in the short term. Most people are okay with that when they see the long term benefits and then making sure that you work with a specialist that can customize where in, in summary, you're maximizing the cash and you're minimizing the insurance. And as a result, you have an efficient asset working for you the rest of your life.